Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Kling Lady and hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. In today's video, I'm going to show you my take on interlock double concertina card. If you like it, I really hope you'll feel inspired and craft along with me. For today's project, I'm going to use a free gift from Creative Stamping Magazine issue 120. In the magazine, on page number 11, you can find one of my cards. If you want to know how to create this one, the link is at the top right corner. The magazine comes with beautiful stamp set collection all about Frida Kahlo. Also, there are some sentiments included that you can use for a variety of projects. And when I saw this magazine, I thought I really need to create something beautiful. In the magazine, there was one image that I was inspired by. And this is so beautiful and colorful. And when I saw it, I thought, let's get all the paints out paintbrush and let's create some backgrounds. So here I've got three panels measuring four and a half by six and a half inches and I've got my PBO acrylic paints. So here they are on the right hand side. I'm going to use my paintbrush, a um, little bit of water and let's get painting. Let's get creative and actually create, let's say, an art piece because that's what's really about. Frida Kahlo was an amazing artist and if you've never heard of it, please check her out. She was absolutely amazing. Her paintings were so beautiful and she painted quite unusual paintings. She was a surrealist and that is one of my favorite art styles. Impressionism is one of the other art styles that I really like. So I thought, can I actually put them together to create a card? So that was the thought behind this card. If you've never ever used any paints to create your cards, I really hope you'll give it a go. It was so much fun to create and actually seeing all those rainbow colors here put a massive smile on my face. So if you've never ever created a background panel like this, I do encourage you to give it a go. As you can see, I started with some beautiful purples, blues, greens, yellows, a little bit of red, and then pink. I think that really makes this card stand out a lot. If you're interested in any of the products I used in today's video, you can check the description down below because I left the links to all the PBO paints and also all the other products I use. As you can see, these comes together really quickly, but to be honest, this video is sped up a little bit. So in the end, the whole card took me over two hours, but you don't need to create your own background panels. You can use any design papers that you've got in your stash. Here, you need five panels measuring four and a half by six and a half inches with your beautiful backgrounds. Because later on, we're going to have black card measuring six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And that will give us the beautiful border and contrast because that's what we need in our beautiful project. And this card was also inspired by Sam Calcott and I will link her video in the description down below. I always wanted to create interlock double concertina card, but I was never ever brave enough. But this magazine really pushed me and I wanted to try something new. That's why I decided to go with that style, but also to take all the paints out and get them on a piece of card because I thought, why not? Let's use that time because it is so therapeutic. And if you've never ever used any paints or maybe pencils to create your backgrounds, I do encourage you to do so. And if you want to create impressionistic card, the one I showed you at the very beginning that is also featured in the magazine, I will leave the link at the end of this video. Recently, I've been very much into fancy fold cards. As you know, I also take part in fancy fold card challenge. And if you're interested in those, I left the link to our Facebook group and also the hashtag FFC challenge 2023. So every single month is dedicated to a different card style. And March, it is still we are on, it is gatefold card. But in April, we're going to create some Dutch cards. So stay tuned for that. You can always take part in it. It's also just for fun. But trust me, it is so worth it because every single month you will create something totally unique. So please give it a go. As you can see, our second panel is nearly ready. It will be time to create our third one. And then we have to create two more. 
saw. And what's really good about this, every single panel will be totally different. So if you use any watercolors or even acrylic paints, trust me, it is worth the effort. If you want, you can also use some alcohol markers like I did with my impressionistic card that was featured in Creative Stamping Magazine issue 120. I also wonder who is your favorite artist of all? To be honest, this is such a tricky question for me because it's like asking you, what's your favorite child? There is no good answer to that question. I have so many favorite artists and actually Frida Kahlo is one of them. She was such an inspiring artist. If you don't know any of her paintings, please check her out. You won't be disappointed. She created so many beautiful surrealistic paintings and I really like this style. If you know surrealism, Dali is my totally favorite one. At the moment, there is absolutely amazing exhibition in London called Frameless, where most of the famous paintings literally come to life. And you feel like you are inside of the painting and everything is happening around you. So if you've never ever been to interactive art exhibition, give it a go. It is so much fun. And I was so happy when I left Frameless and I'm pretty sure I need to go again. If you're interested in that, I will leave the link in the description down below. It's very close to Marble Arch Station, so it's in the central London. As you can see, this panel comes together really quickly because to be honest, whenever I created more panels, the quicker I became with painting all those small brush strokes. Super quick and easy. And what's really good, just have a piece of tissue paper on the side so you can dry your paintbrush. As you can see, I've got the pot with some water on the side as well. And it's always a good idea to dry your paintbrush first and then add a tiny bit of water. So now we have to create two more panels. I just couldn't resist. It was so much fun. And also I'm going to create two smaller panels that will go inside of our interlock panel later on. So you will see that in a couple of minutes. So I also wonder what is your favorite color palette, not only for card making, but in general. So what colors do you like to wear? What colors do you do you really like to look at? Please let me know in the comments down below. I think for me it is purple and blue combination. I really like those colors together. But to be honest, I also like purple and green as well. And when you add a little bit of white with, I think this is the best color combo in the world. But if you do prefer maybe pastel colors or maybe vintage style, please let me know in the comments down below. As you can see, this is so amazing to work with. So I do encourage you, put some paints on the side. Just a tiny drop will really make a difference because you will go to that different world where you can just paint and don't think about anything else. Please give it a go this Easter time. You won't be disappointed and you will be very happy with the result. So as you can see, I'm nearly done with that fourth pattern. Panel. And at this point, I thought all of them look like spring. At least that's what I see. I can see a beautiful meadow with lots of beautiful flowers here. If you do the same, please let me know in the comments down below. Because that's what impressionism is about. There are short, energetic, spontaneous brushstrokes. But when you literally move away from them, you can see so many beautiful details. But if you look closely, as you can see, there are just only short brush strokes. But what's really good about them, they are just so bright and colorful. If you do have your favorite impressionistic painting, please let me know in the comments down below. I absolutely love Water Lily Pond and long time ago I created a project based on that painting. So if you haven't seen that one, please check it out and the link is at the top right corner. As you can see, I really enjoyed this process so much. 
this video is sped up really because otherwise you will spend two hours with me just painting the panel so i thought no i can't do it to you i just have to speed it up but still the video it is pretty long but i'm going to show you step by step how to put this interlock double concertina card and if you want to give it a go please do it if you don't want to spend time just creating your own background maybe not only with paints but with stamps use whatever is in your stash this card is this so unique and even my husband said it is the best card I've ever created and to be honest I actually feel that way. I was so happy when I saw it finish and I think I'm going to keep it. It is so beautiful and I really really like it and it's also with one of my favorite artists so amazing right? Maybe Creative Stamping Magazine will do something about Claude Monet. I would absolutely love it. Or maybe they'll have a stamp set with some palettes, paints. That would be cool as well. If you do have Creative Stamping Magazine or if you subscribe to it, please let me know what is your favorite stamp set that it was included in the magazine. I'm really curious what's your thought. As you can see, this panel is nearly ready. And we have to create two smaller panels that will go inside the card. Now we have to put them to dry and I left them for about one hour. So in the meantime, I created some other elements for the card and I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. As you can see, these panels are super tiny, but they really need to have those colors because later on they will be inside of the card. And that's what's really good about any colors you use. If you use any black or gold, that will give you enough contrast to make your card even more useful unique and special. So I do encourage you to play with your colors and give it a little bit of contrast. As you can see, I decided to use acrylic paint here because if you put the colors on top, they don't blend. So you don't really get that mud. And what's really good about them, they dry pretty quickly unless you put a big drop of paint. So it is time to put those panels to dry and we can move on to our next step. So. It is time to put those apart and now I'm going to use one of the best stamps from this collection from Creative Stamping Magazine issue 120 and I'm going to heat emboss it. It is such a unique style so I thought let's give it a go. So I'm going to use my black ink from Gina K. It is perfect for heat embossing and it's black. To be honest, I couldn't find my black embossing powder. That's why I decided to go with that ink pad. And if you do have it, it dries very long because it's a pigment ink. So what you can do is to use some embossing powder. And in this case, I'm going to use my clear embossing powder by WOW. It is perfect because you can use any pigment ink and then in any color you want and then use that clear embossing powder and it will have the color of your ink pad. So it means you don't really need that many embossing powders. All you have to do is to use your ink pads. It is time to heat set it and as you can see it really comes to life. And at this point I thought should I actually add a little bit of watercolors here like maybe my zig markers but in the end I thought no let's use some alcohol markers. So I can proudly say this card is mixed media card because I use some paints inks but also alcohol markers. As you can see I'm really speeding up this process here and all I have to do is to make sure I do have some variation with light and darker colors and what's really good about like tri-blend markers here you do have light medium and dark and this is the best way and the quickest to actually achieve that 3D look. I'm not really sure if you can see it here, but in real life, it really makes a difference. Whenever you do heat embossing and then you use alcohol markers, just be careful because that heat embossing can damage the nibs of your pens. So do it very gently. Don't really go over as much as you would with zig markers or watercolor markers because you have to be very quick here. And to be honest, it doesn't have to be perfect. And this image of Frida Kahlo here is absolutely stunning. And when I saw it, I thought I really need to use it straight away. 
As you can see, I use a variety of some greens, blues and purples. And to decorate her beautiful head and the hairband with flowers, I use some pinks and peach colors. Because I thought, why not? The whole card is going to be colorful anyway. So, yes, you can use whatever you want, right? And as you know me, I absolutely love colors. So with this stamp set collection, I simply couldn't resist. If you do have this creative stamping magazine issue 120, I do wonder what color palette are you going to use for your project? If you already created the project, please let me know what did you make and it would be amazing if you can leave a link in the comments down below. So when these elements are ready, it is time to cut our Frida Kahlo. And I did it off camera because this video is pretty long anyway. So now we have all the panels that we created with our acrylic paint. They are so bright, aren't they? So I decided to use the first one on the left to create the front panel. For my card and I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, to put those elements together because you do have time to maneuver all of them. And now it is time to add some contrast. So I do have that black panel measuring six and three quarters by four and three quarters. And I'm going to use the same black color mat later on for all the other four panels. So stay tuned for that. Now it is time to add that black mat to our small pieces. As you can see, they are ready. So I can put them to the side. And now it is time to create our card base. So I've got my 10 by 7 inches and I scored it in 5. Now I've got 10 and a half by 7 inches and I'm going to score it at half and five inches and this way we're going to have that flap to put the card together. Now it is time for the smaller panel and it's measuring four by nearly eleven and three quarters and I'm going to score it at half an inch, two inches, then turn it over, half an inch and two inches and then I'm going to fold it in half because this was not perfectly eleven and three quarters so I use that trick to make sure it is folded in half. Now we are going to banish all those score lines both sides and I do encourage you to do the same because when you open the card that's what you're going to need. They have to move all the way. So when this is ready, it will be time to actually decorate our card. And I'm going to show you how to do it with no cutting dice. And this is very crucial. So I'm going to use my trimmer. And first I'm going to use my pencil and a ruler to draw a rectangle. So this rectangle has to be slightly bigger than the panel that will go inside. So the panel inside will be four inches tall. So this rectangle has, be, has to be at least four and one quarter inch. And this way you're going to make sure that the panel will move easily in the end. So. As you can see, I don't use any cutting dice. So yes, you can create this card with no tools, but you need the trimmer or like I'm going to show you later on, all you have to do is to use a craft knife and a cutting mat. And this will work because now when I've got my first panel ready, I can use it as a template. And this is so cool with this technique. As you can see, the blade here in the trimmer, it is so cool because you can move it wherever you want and then trim all the elements. And it's always a good idea to have that panel here and check if the one inside will work. Now I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to trace the rectangle here. And again, I'm going to cut it, but this time I'm going to use my craft knife and a cutting mat. And using my ruler, I'm just going to help myself. But if you use a craft knife, just be careful because you don't want to cut any of your fingers, right? But I'm very confident with it, so I don't really mind at all. And when this is ready, we are going to do exactly the same in the black panels that measure six and three quarters by four and three quarters. But here is our ten and a half by seven inches and we also have to use our pencil here. So please put it in the center, just eyeball it for now. And then if you have any pencil marks, you can get rid of them later on. And I will do that off camera because you don't need to watch me to do that, right? So it is time to cut those panels here. 
and it will be absolutely amazing if you do have some rectangle cutting dies. But if you don't know, if you don't have them, that is not a problem. As you can see, there is always a way. And we as crafters have so many amazing ideas. So yes, there is always a way. So when these elements are ready, we are going to use our templates to actually cut those rectangles inside one of the white panels. And the white panels are 300GSM white multi-purpose card. And again, using my pencil and then my ruler and craft knife. Super quick and easy. And the whole trick here is not to move the ruler because we really need that straight cut here. So when this is ready, yes, we can start assembling all the elements together. And as you can see here, we've got that flap. So it will be helpful to put those elements together. But first we're going to cut that rectangle here. Have you ever created that interlock double concertina card? If you haven't, I really hope you'll give it a go. As I told you, it was so much fun to create. Now, it is time to put the elements together. So, I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, because I do have time to maneuver the elements if I make a mistake. And at this point, if your rectangles are not exactly as they should be, you can use your craft knife again and your cutting mat. And if you can see any of the lines from other cut, I do encourage you to do that before you put the inside panel. So yes, you can do that now. So as you can see, it is time to put those beautiful and colorful panels we created on black background. I think it really gives that nice contrast. So how often do you use black cards in your card making? Please let me know in the comments down below. So when these are ready, we're going to put the two wind panels together. As you can see, there is a flap on the left hand side, but first, as you can see, I do have some excess of the cut, so I'm going to use my scissors, but you can use your craft knife as well, and that will be perfectly fine. And to be honest, no one will ever know that you made a mistake. So yes, we as crafters always find a way. Now, let's assemble the card, right? Because that's what we're going to do. So, one and only liquid glue, magic glue, because you do have time to maneuver the elements. And when this is ready, we are going to put the side panels here as well. As you can see, now it is time for the inside panel. So, I'm starting with those colorful panels first, which were measuring... Um, one and one quarter by three and three quarters and that is the black mat and the colorful one was one by three and a half now i've got some gold panels and small black panels and this time i'm going to do some gold heat embossing because i thought that will work so well with the gold panel for the inside and I really wanted to have that contrast on my card. So as you can see, I use three stamps from that from that Frida color collection and it is time to assemble them. So again, I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, but if you want, you can also use any double sided tape and that will be perfectly fine. If you're curious about that gold card I use, um, this one comes from Hobbycraft and I really like it. It is so elegant and it has some beautiful gold splashes and it's just purely gorgeous. I absolutely love it. It's always a good idea to burnish your panels on the back as well. So it is time to put our colorful panels on the left and on the right and it will be time to adhere our inside panel. As you can see, it's always a good idea to actually check if they fit because that is your last time before you assemble the whole card together. So as you can see, I was lining that two inches um, score line with the black mat. And this is crucial because we want all those elements to actually fold flat. To be honest, the card won't be really flat because it will have some dimension inside. But do not worry, you can always use your envelope box to create a box with it or you can hand deliver the card. But I think in this case, I'm going to keep it. I really, really like it. How often do you keep the cards that you make? Please let me know in the comments down below. So it is time to put those panels here. And again, I'm checking it has to touch the black mat here. It's very crucial because otherwise you won't be able 
to close it properly. It's always a good idea to hold it for a couple of seconds and make sure that the glue sets properly. And the cut is nearly done. All we have to do is to add the front panel. So if you remember our Frida we created, it is time to put her here off camera. I also gold heat emboss the sentiment and in this case it says best wishes i think it is so beautiful oh yes birthday wishes it is so beautiful and it matches the gold inside of the card so the whole project is complete so what do you think about this would you like to give it a go i really hope you will please let me know if you like the colorful panels or maybe the gold and black there is plenty of space to write your message inside and now you can see the last time how the whole project looks like so i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did let me know in the comments down below thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me don't forget to like this video Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'm going to see you in my next video very soon. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting. Bye.